welcome to the Emoji Trading Order Flow video series. My name's Lee Harris and I'm the founder of Emoji Trading. We make add on software for Sierra Chart that helps you to visualize and interpret order flow more easily. Our software brings the changes in the market's supply and demand to life so that you can plan trades using better information and precise execution, which can ultimately reduce your risk and maximize your profits. In this video series, we're going to explain how you can start to use Emoji and Sierra Chart as the foundation for a trading approach based upon order flow. In this first video, we introduce Sierra Chart numbers bars which will form the basis for understanding and reading order flow. By watching the rest of our videos, you'll learn about Delta, the relative buying or selling power within the market, identifying powerful buying or selling activity by reading the trades initiated by aggressive traders, identifying absorption and reading how the market reacts to aggressive buying or selling activity and the impact of passive traders on the market, identifying exhaustion and assessing whether a market move has the strength to continue, interpreting supply and demand within the market and making trade decisions based upon this insight, identifying price levels that have potential to be near-term targets or reversal points, reading what the market's telling you getting the big picture and making trading decisions based upon identifying trends, consolidation and reversals, general tips on order flow trading using emoji trading software and Sierra charts, and example order flow trade setups. Let's begin with a quick history lesson. In 2003, Trevor Harnett set up a company called Market Delta to offer software that delivered a new type of chart, the footprint chart. This was billed as the only chart to have been developed specifically for traders after electronic markets were created, containing all the data relating to price and volume. For each bar and at each price level, a footprint chart displays the volume traded at each price. Footprint is a registered trademark for Market Delta, so you'll find that different software vendors name their charts that display information in this way by different names. In the case of Sierra Chart, this chart type is referred to as numbers bars, and Sierra Chart provides an incredibly cost-effective way of trading using these concepts. Emoji software runs on Sierra Chart and includes indicators based upon concepts developed by Mike Valtos of orderflows.com, who in turn offers a set of orderflow tools for NinjaTrader. So now, let's get into numbers bars and cover some key concepts. As you know, the price of a futures contract depends upon whether you wish to buy or sell. If you wish to buy, the price you pay is called the ask or the offer price. If you wish to sell, the price is known as the bid. These names come from what the counterparty to your trade is doing. When you want to buy, the counterparty has an asking price, a price at which they are offering to sell. When you want to sell, they are prepared to bid a certain price for what you have to sell. The act of buying at the asking price is known as lifting the ask or lifting the offer and the act of selling at what the counterparty is willing to bid for the contract you are selling is known as hitting the bid. An easy way to remember this is that buying generally drives price up and selling generally drives price down. If you lift an object, it goes up, and if you hit an object, it falls down. So you lift the offer and you hit the bid. As a futures trader, you almost certainly trade using the DOM. This stands for depth of market. Some people pronounce this dome, and others refer to it as a price ladder. This display sets out the quantity of limit orders at every price in the market. It can be regarded as the intent of the market to buy and sell at given price levels. Realistically, the volume shown at any level other than the current quote has little meaning. It's a demonstration of intent and subject to much game playing known as spoofing. Think about this in terms of a conventional liquid auction market with many buyers and sellers, something like eBay. Imagine you're selling your car on eBay. Would you set a reserve price for it based upon what other similar models have actually sold for, or would you rather list it at some random price and suffer all the emails from people who are going to get in touch with you and say, I'll pay you $1,000 if you end the auction now. And you know what, they probably aren't going to complete the transaction anyway. Here's the key point. The reality of the market is demonstrated by the trail of transactions that have actually happened, not those transactions that are advertised as potentially happening if we reach a certain price. This is the essence of trading using order flow. We make our decisions based upon the actions of the market, which are displayed by the volume that has traded. So let's get going with numbers bars. 
I'm opening a new intraday chart. We'll be using e-mini S&P for all of the examples in these videos, but the principles apply to all futures markets, bonds, oil, etc. If you're trading forex rather than exchange traded currency futures, there are some other considerations around what represents traded volume, and we'll address forex and stocks in another video. Anyhow, here's a bar chart of ES. I'm going into the chart settings and I'm changing the chart type from being time-based to a 5 tick reversal chart. This means that rather than forming a new bar every few minutes, we only form a new bar when price moves away from the high or low of the previous bar by 5 ticks. When reading order flow, we're more interested in how volume traded across a range of prices rather than over a period of time, and we gain this insight by selecting a chart type that ignores time as the trigger for a new bar. Sierra chart gives us lots of options, price range, price reversal, volume traded per bar, Personally, I use reversal as, like the old-fashioned point-and-figure charts, it provides a sense of the back-and-forwards price movement within the market. All of the examples within this video series are based upon the e-mini S&P using a 5-range reversal chart, and depending upon what you trade, I encourage you to explore these different types of charts and different chart periods so that you can find a chart type and period that's in tune with your trading preference. Here are some ideas to consider when day trading different contracts. While I'm in chart settings, you'll also see that I've set the chart to ignore the overnight session. That's purely so that we can easily see the most active trading through this video series. Now that's done, I'm quickly duplicating the chart so we've got something to compare to at the end of this section. Let's start working with this new version. First, we'll go to Studies and add the Numbers Bar study. As you can see, there are a lot of inputs. We'll be coming back to some of these later in the series of videos, but for now, we're going to change the text type displayed in the numbers bars to bid volume and ask volume, and we'll set the background for the numbers bars to be transparent. Let's adjust the horizontal scale of the chart to see the numbers. I'm also right-clicking the price scale to fix a few settings for the scale increment and the range so that we don't need to keep adjusting the scale. What we now see is a chart that presents the number of contracts traded at the bid and at the ask for each price level. We'll just make a couple more changes to the numbers bar settings that personally I like to use. First, we can overlay a candlestick around the numbers to get a sense of the price movement. To do this, I'm setting the open and close marker style to candlestick outline, placing these markers in column 1. We can actually display up to three columns of volume-related information in each bar, one is enough for us for now, and I'm setting the candlestick colours to something traditional. I'm also going to change the character between the bid and the ask volume to an X rather than the vertical bar. I find this to be more distinctive. And finally, let's change the font size to 11 so the information is nice and clear. That's it. We've built our first numbers bar chart. I'm saving these settings as the default settings for the numbers bar study so that next time we add numbers bars, it's our starting point. I'm also saving this chart book for future reference within the videos, and you can download it to study and work with at emojitrading.com downloads. What's important to understand is that because a price quote is made up of a bid and an ask price, we read and we consider this data diagonally. So, as we can see here, when the price quote was 24.42 and a quarter, 24.42 and a half, 1928 contracts were traded as market orders lifting the ask, and 2415 contracts were traded as market orders hitting the bid. So we have a series of bars showing us at each price level how many contracts were entered as market orders and traded. I'm going to add one more Sierra chart study to this chart book, which is the numbers bars calculated values. This is another study that has a lot of inputs. What I want to display is the difference between the total of the ask volume and the total of the bid volume. In other words, how many contracts were bought minus how many contracts were sold. We refer to this difference as delta, and we'll cover this in more detail in the next video. 
As a reference point, I'm also adding the total volume. I'm going to set the names displayed for these as delta and volume rather than the default longer names. I'm setting delta to be automatically colored based upon whether it's positive or negative, and I'm going to add some grid lines to the table that Sierra Chart has drawn. Once again, I'm setting these as the default values for the study, and I'm saving this new chart book for you to download and work with. Let's compare this to the bar chart that we started with. I think you'll agree we've got a lot of potential now to understand what's behind the movement in the market, and bear in mind that we don't have any indicators on this chart. We're just looking at the market by considering the volume that traded at each price, and for each bar what the difference was between buying volume and selling volume. Armed with this information, we can start to identify a change in the buying or selling power leading to a possible reversal or breakout, the actions of aggressive traders, the market's reaction to the actions of aggressive traders, and the strength of a trend and its likelihood of continuing. We'll cover all of this and more in the next videos, starting with Delta. One.